Good evening. We were Sarvakshi.com by Vetri from Pandicherry. I was discussing optical isomerism last class. So let me continue further. When I was discussing last class regarding optical isomerisms, to show optical activity, a molecule should have four conditions. One, no plane of symmetry. Two, no center of symmetry. Three, no axis of symmetry and four no alternate axis of symmetry now my question is is it necessary in each and every case we have to assess all the four conditions i have already informed you for a high secondary level the first condition is sufficient on the remaining three conditions very difficult and you go for a complicated molecule so there is another way a short way we can assess if a particular compound is optically active or not that is, let me continue that conditions regarding for the optical activity today. Overall condition to show optical activity. To show optical activity, what is the overall condition? Here, I am introducing a new term, chirality. So, chirality is the essential condition to show optical activity. You can ask question, what is chirality? Chirality is the essential and sufficient condition for a molecule to be optically active. What is chirality? I can give the uh, definition for this chirality. Any molecule where no plane of symmetry, no center of symmetry, no axis of symmetry, and no alternate axis of symmetry, that particular molecule is said to have chirality. Or the molecule is called chiral molecule, and the center is called chiral center. Now, the chirality arises by two ways. One is due to asymmetry, the chirality arises. Another is due to dissymmetry, the chirality arises. So, as I have already pointed out, optically active molecules are called chiral molecules, and the center is called chiral center. This is the most important information you must have. So, optically active molecules are called chiral molecules. And optically active centers are called chiral center. In a molecule, there may be one chiral center, two or three, it may be any numbers, that depending upon the nature of compound. Okay, let me discuss what is asymmetry, what are the types of asymmetry we can, I can discuss, and what is dissymmetry, what are the other information I can discuss. First, what is asymmetry? So, optical activity due to asymmetry. Asymmetry means we say asymmetric carbon in organic chemistry. So, asymmetric carbon, I can define this way. What is asymmetric carbon? Asymmetric carbon atom is one where four different atoms or groups are attacked. This is the most important condition. So, if you want to assess a particular compound is optically active or not, just look at the central carbon. Is there any dif four different atoms or groups are attached? If there, if there are four different groups or atoms are attached, then particular carbon is said to be of said to be asymmetric carbon. If it is having an asymmetric carbon, then we think of it may be having optical activity. A specific example here, I am giving the D-lactic acid. The center is, this is carbon. It is, it is a conventional method of showing fissure projection. As I have already pointed out, three-dimensional molecular model, it is represented by the fissure in two-dimensional board or notebook. According to two-dimensional board here, it is indicated there are two groups. One is a vertical group, another is horizontal groups. In the vertical groups, top COH group and bottom CH group. In the horizontal group, left side hydrogen and right side OH group. There are four different groups. So it is called asymmetric carbon. So in D lactic acid, there is asymmetric carbon. Now, the interesting information here it is. So what I have, just, just see here, what I, I am showing here it is the D lactic acid. I am giving you a more such with this. On my right is OH. Automatically, you just think of, uh, just see here, wait a minute. On my, this is the model, D lactic acid. On my right is OH. On my left is H. Bottom CH3. And this top is COOH. COH. So let me repeat again. On my right, OH. On my left, H, bottom, CH3, and above, COH. This is a D-lactic acid. In this case, in this D-lactic acid, 
I can say four different. One is just C O X, E X, C H three, and C O O X. This is the D lactic acid. So this is the interesting information. Just I want to give. So why D lactic acid is optic lactic because it is having an asymmetric carbon. Okay, let me go for the next one. So optic lactic acid due to asymmetry when you say. So if there is any asymmetric carbon, one or more, then asymmetry arises. If when there is an asymmetry, it's an optic lactic. So when there is an asymmetry, the next question arises. That is, there are, I can classify asymmetry into two. One is optic lactic due to one asymmetric carbon atom, and second type is optic lactic due to more than one asymmetric carbon atoms. So the entire optic lactic compounds I can classify into two types. One is Optic lactivity due to asymmetric or asymmetric carbon atom. Only one asymmetric carbon atom I can classify as one. Second types optic lactivity due to more than one asymmetric carbon atom type two I can discuss here. So that I am classifying for my convenience. I am going to discuss first. Let me take now optic lactivity due to one asymmetric carbon atoms. So in this case I have I have already pointed out compounds containing one asymmetric carbon atom. Just now have discussed D lactic acid. D capital D indicates configuration. I have already pointed out. Let me repeat again. In an asymmetric carbon atom, when we are writing the structure of molecule, so we have to write a according to Fisher, we have to write a molecule such a way that the carbon atom should come the vertical groups. If the lowest asymmetric carbon atom, any electronegative atom or groups on the right hand side, we will assign D. Any Any electronegative atom or group on the left hand side, you have to assign it is L capital D capital L. It is configuration. The bracket indicating minus and plus. It is nothing but the measured quantity optical activity measured by polarimeter. This is the information. Okay. Now you take now. So here I have shown the lactic acid. It is lactic acid exists in two form. One is plus form, another is minus form. So. What you are seeing on left, it is minus form. What you are seeing right, it is the plus form. L lactic acid. So D minus lactic acid. Another is L plus lactic acid. It is shown here. Now, so why this is optic lactic? Because there are four different groups are there. That is O H group one, H two, C O H three, and C H three four. Four different groups or atoms are present. So it is optic lactic. The same way the other side. L plus lactic acid again O H again H C O O H C S three. The only difference in this environment is the spatial arrangement it is different. So in the first in the first if you compare D minus lactic acid and L plus lactic acid O H on that is in D minus lactic acid O H on my right side right hand side whereas in other case O H on the left hand side. Now you can see the model here. So I am going to show you model. That is I can show you you can see the model now. So on my left hand, I am keeping your D lactic acid. I am keeping the on my left hand. This is D lactic acid. For you, for you, the viewers, this is your right side O H. Now what you can think is this is the you can think of mirror image. So D lactic acid, this is L lactic acid. D minus lactic acid, this is L plus lactic acid. Mirror image. So lactic acid exists in two forms. That is minus form plus form or D form L form. This is the form because why this is I have already pointed out there are four different atoms or groups are attached. Now, so this the another important information I want to give. So coming for that is optic generally in a complete point of question can be assumed in the case of optic the lactic acid how many optical isomers are possible? There are only two. One is plus form, another is minus form. So I can I want to introduce one more term here. Plus and minus form. That is optically active plus form and optically active minus form are called an enantiomer. I am introducing a new term, an enantiomer. What is an enantiomer? Let me define now. I will explain. Optical. Let's. I am going to give the definition for enantiomers. Optically active compounds having same molecular formula. So compounds which are optically active having same molecular formula. But one will be the mirror image of the other, are called enantiomers. Let me repeat again. Optical active compounds having same molecular formula, but 
One will be the mirror image of the other are called an enshomer. The examples just now have discussed D minus lactic acid and L plus lactic acid. Just see here, if you put a mirror, this is the mirror image, M, that is the entire thing mirror image. So these two are called enantiomers. So D minus lactic acid and L plus lactic acid are called enantiomers. So any of the lactic compound, there will be plus form, there will be minus form. So always there will be enantiomer. Okay, let me go for the next one. So, I have discussed optic lactic compound containing one asymmetric carbon specific example I have taken lactic acid. Now let me go for optical activity due to more than one asymmetric carbon atom. More than one I will take and I explain. So more than one asymmetric carbon atoms, again I am going to classify into two types. Type 1, unsymmetrical optical lactic compounds. Kindly follow, unsymmetrical optical lactic compound. That means the compound is containing more than one asymmetric center and also unsymmetrical. I will explain. The second case is symmetrical optic light compounds. What if I be unsymmetrical and symmetrical? If you write the structure of a molecule, that is according to Fitzer projection, then the top end and bottom end, if you are writing the, the, here, you can see the molecule example is given here. Example is the IEP name is given. That is, that is the based on functional group. This is the coming under the naming. That is more than one functional group. It is type 3. So number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4. The 4 carbon atom means it is butane. So again functional group OH in 2, OH in 3, OH in 4. So naming is 2, 3, 4 trihydroxy butane 1AL. The suffix is CHO. So this is the IUPAC name for that one. So this particular compound, one side is CHO, another side is CH2OH. So what is happening here? The, the right and left, or if you write a molecule in that is vertical in vertical positions, top and bottom. Top is CHO, bottom is CH2OH. So if they are different, I will call it as unsymmetrical. So we have to orient the molecule such a way that let, let me write and show. Just kindly follow me. So this is, I am going to write in this form. So, if you write a molecule like this, in this form, this is the normal way of writing the structure, very complicated structure. So now just see, the top is CHO, bottom is CH2OH, in between is identical. So, if top and bottom ends are different, I will call it as unsymmetrical. Suppose, if bottom and top ends are same, I will call it as symmetrical. Say for example, COH, CHOH, CHOH, and then COH. So this is the, nothing but uh, tartaric acid. If you take this specific example, top COH and bottom is also COH, in between CHOH, CHOH. This is called symmetrical. That is, Two asymmetric centers. Both cases, two asymmetric centers are there. But first case, unsymmetrical. Second case, symmetrical. So let me explain now. So, so what is unsymmetrical optic acid compound? In this case, this will be example 2, 3, 4, trihydroxybutane one half. The second example I have shown you, that is symmetrical optic compound, tartaric acid is the specific example I have this one. Okay, let me go one by one. First, I will take unsymmetrical optical active compound, I will discuss. Under the unsymmetrical optical active compound, just now I have informed you, the IEPS name has given 2, 3, 4, trihydroxybutane-1-AL. The formula, CH2OH, CHOX, CHOS, CHO, this is the formula. But for this molecular formula, and if you try to write the various possible structural formula, there are four isomers possible. Optically active, four isomers are possible. So how to identify how, many, how, how to identify the total number of optical isomers possible for a particular compound? So in the case of unsymmetrical optical active compound, kindly follow students, kindly have it in mind. In the case of unsymmetrical optical active compounds, we have a formula to identify the total number of optical active compounds. That is, total number of optical active compound is equal to 2 to the power of n. This is the formula. 
n two to the power of n what is n n nothing but the not, here it is called number of optical active center number of optical active center here in this case in this specific example there are two optical active center here this is one this is another optical active center why i am optical active call it as this is h1 oh2 cho3 this entire group is four same way if you take here h1 oh2 that is CH2, OS3, the entire group is again 4. So there are two different asymmetry center. So let's substitute this in this formula. 2 to the power of n, that is nothing but 2 to the power of 2, we'll get now 4. So possibility. Here, in the case of 2, 3, 4 trihydroxy butane 1 all, there are 4 isomers possible, 4 optically active isomers possible. Now, let me show you the all the possibility, four possible structure for that particular compound. Now, just I am writing here, structure one is the top, and I have written already, top end CHO, bottom is CH2OH, it is asymmetrical. Then, OH, OH is on the right side, CH is at the H and H and on the left side. Now, the mirror image, I can write another formula, this is number two, second structure. And, Third structure is now this is the third structure. Again, top CHO, bottom CHO. What is the difference is the first is structure one, OH is on the same side, the structure three, the first that is carbon let me numbering is this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Now second and third carbon OH is on the same side in structure one. In structure two, OH is on the left hand side. In structure three, the second carbon atom. The OH is on the left side, in third carbon atom, OH is on the right hand side. And the fourth structure, nothing but the mirror image of three. So, totally all the four different structures are there. So, I can give name for this also. Common name I can give you. This is called actually D erythros. Erythros. D erythros. Common name. And for this one, I can call it as L erythros. L erythros. The same way, the bottom structure 3 we will call it as D trios. D trios. And fourth structure is L trios. So, even I can give common name for this. So, when I go for IUPH name, now I have to specify carefully the each and every carbon atom with the RRS configuration I have to use. That I will be discussing later. So, the idea here it is. In the case of unsymmetrical optical active compound, in this case two asymmetric center, I am by applying the formula 2 to the power of n, there are four possible structures possible here. I have written all the four possible structures. Okay, let me discuss some more information under this. So here I have already pointed out this is D erythros, structure 1, structure 2, L erythros, mirror image, L erythros. Since it is a mirror image, I have already explained, they are nothing but an enchioma. I have already explained, what is an enchioma? Optically active compounds having same molecular formula, but one will be the mirror image of the other. So D erythros is the mirror image of L erythros. So it is an enchioma. Same way, if you go for D trios and L trios, common name. Again, so structure 3 is the mirror image of structure 4. Automatically, it's an again an enchiomers because 3 and 4, D3Os and DL3Os are optical active compounds having the same molecular formula, but one will be the mirror image of the other. Again, an enchiomer. So, so, the structure 1 and 2, an enchiomer. Structure 3 and 4, an enchiomer. This is the most important information. Now, I want to give one more information. Kindly follow me. That is, I have already pointed out in the case of unsymmetrical optical gamma, in this case two asymmetric center, there are four opt that is optically active isomer possible. So one and two an enchioma, three and four an enchioma. Because they are mirror images. I want to uh, ask one question for you. That is, suppose you compare one and three, you compare one and four, they are not mirror images. Same way, you compare 2 and 3, you compare 2 and again 4, they are not mirror images. So what we can call it as? So they are called diastereoisomers. So 1 and 2 are called enantiomers, 
3 and 4 are called enantiomers, whereas 1 and 3 and 1 and 4 are diastereoisomers, 2 and 3 and 2 and 4 are called diastereoisomers. Then you can raise the question, how to define diastereoisomers? Let me explain now. So, as I have already pointed out, D erythros and L erythros enantiomer, D three O's and L three O's enantiomer. Now, now I am saying D erythros and D three O's one and three. They are not mirror images. Kindly see, they are not mirror images. <coughs> so they are not mirror images. So D erythros and their D three O's actually they are diastereoisomer. How can we define diastereoisomer? I will define now. So before that, you can give one more example. See here, so D erythros and D trios again, they are diastereoisomers. They are not mirror images. So just this line you have to identify, it is a separating line. So D erythros and L, L trios, they are diastereoisomers. So how to define di I mean, diastereoisomers? Let me define now, carefully. Please tell me, what is the definition? Optically active compounds having same molecular formula, but one will not be mirror image of the other. One will not be the mirror image of the other are called diastereoisomers. So under the enantiomer, I have defined optical light compound having the same molecular formula, but one will be the mirror image of the other that is called the enantiomer. If it is not mirror image, we will call it as diastereoisomer. Kindly follow, kindly have it in mind. So, so, in this case, D erythros and D trios, D erythros and L trios, a specific example for diastereoisomers. Now, let me ask one more important question. Okay, what type of compound will show that is diastereoisomers? We, have, we know already, enantiomer is very easy. Any optical IT compounds will be minimum, it will show plus form and minus form, definitely. The next question is, what type of uh, compound will show diastereoisomer? I can give you a guideline. Any optical active compound containing minimum 2 asymmetric carbon, minimum 2 asymmetric carbon necessary to show diastereoisomer. So, compound containing only one asymmetric center will not show diastereoisomer. This is the most important information. Please keep it in your mind. Okay, let me go for the next. So, so far I have discussed unsymmetrical optical active compounds. Under the unsymmetric optical compound, I have already discussed one asymmetric carbon, more than one asymmetric carbon. Now let me come for symmetrical optical active compound I want to discuss. Symmetrical optical active compound. What is the meaning of symmetrical? I have already I, uh, given you explanation. Top and bottom end are identical, then we think of symmetrical. Why you are saying symmetrical? Because in between there is a plane of symmetry. A specific example I want to give that you can understand. What is meant by symmetrical? Let me take tartaric acid, then I can explain to you, you can understand now. Yes. So if you take this example, so top end is the y h, bottom is the y h. So I can call it a symmetrical. So now there is a plane of symmetry because this is one half, this is another half. So it's a plane of symmetry. That's why we are using the term symmetrical optical active compounds. So in this compounds, if the compound is having top and bottom ends are identical atom or groups, that compound will call it as symmetrical optical active compounds. Okay. I hope you have, now you have a clear idea what is symmetrically optical active compounds. Symmetrical. So symmetrical optical active compounds, I can further classify into three types. So type 1. So, so I want to, there are three types, type 1, type 2, type 3. So in order to represent all the three, I want to give in a general formula. This is the general formula to represent for all the three types. What is the formula I can use here? Here it is given COOH. CHOH, then CHOH N minus 2 times, then CHOH COOH. This is the formula I can apply to represent all the three types. I am going to discuss. So this you have to keep it in mind. That the top is CHOH, and again, let me, let me, let, let, I will write in the form of vertical form, you can easily understand that. So you just see, that is COOH, COOH, CHOH, 
another is CHOH then automatically here I can use N minus 2 then again CHOH and then COH this is the formula top end COH and bottom is also the same identical this is symmetrical optical electric compounds so, so this is the general formula I am going to apply for again I am going to classify into three types so symmetrical optical electric compounds I can classify into three types type 1 n minus 2 that is n minus 2 equal to zero number of carbon atom that is type 1 specific example is tartaric acid so I have already pointed out this is the general formula we have to assume so n minus 2 equal to 0 means n equal to 2 that is tartaric acid the next one type 2 n minus 2 equal to even number of carbon atoms just now I explained you n minus 2 equal to 2 comma 4 comma 6 any number even number in that case so automatically you just think of COOHCHOH in this case n minus 2 equal to 2 means here additionally 2 2 minus 2 4 so including the left side CHOH right side COH to count total number will be 4 like this so that is type 2 then coming for n minus 2 equal to odd numbers that is odd number of carbon atoms so this group CHOH group n minus 2 equal to 1 means the correspondingly left side CHYS, right side CHYS, totally 3. So if 1 means total 3, if 3 means again 5, like thus it will be. So it will be type 3. So I will discuss by taking all the three examples one by one. First I am taking symmetrical optical active compounds, type 1. Type 1 means n minus 2 equal to 0. n minus 2 equal to 0 I am taking. That is pencil, but tartaric acid. So tartaric acid I am rep representing by four different structural formula. Number structure one in, in case that is, that is if you look into this let me call it a one, two, three, four that is four carbon. Now in this four carbon now on the right side second carbon is right hand side third carbon is the right hand same side. So now this, this is the mirror image for that one. So one and two are mirror images. Then go for three structure three. In this case, the second and second carbon atom and third carbon atom OH are different. Second carbon atom OH on the left hand side, third carbon atom OH on the right hand side. So this is another structure, and this is the mirror image of the structure four. So there are four possible structures for tartaric acid. I can now say so tartaric acid exists in four forms. Out of four, how many optically active, how many optically inactive? Because it is having a symmetrical. So that is a plane of symmetry. So we have to analyze carefully. Let me explain now. What is the way we have to analyze? So one and two structures, they are called meso form. I will be discussing. I will be discussing meso. What it will be meso? Optically inactive. Optically inactive means there is a plane of symmetry here. In the case of number one, I can use the owner. This is actually D. D tartaric acid. This is L tartaric acid. Actually, here I want to give one information. The D, for, uh, D and L configuration fails in tartaric acid. That's why R and S configuration was introduced. I will be discussing later. But temporarily, we will say sector one, sector two, I will call it as sector one and two are meso forms. Because they are. There is a plane of symmetry. Now, what is the meaning of this one? That means this one. So, suppose this assume this is one, the, the one half rotate clockwise, the plane produces light. The second half rotate anti clockwise. The total effect is zero. So, optically inactive. The same way, the other case. This half rotate clockwise and this half rotate anti clockwise. Again, it is zero. So that is structure 1 and 2 are called meso form optically inactive. They are identical. Inactive, that's nothing but meso. So one. So there, then there are other forms. One is plus form, another is minus form. We have to think of. So totally there are three isomerism possible in the case of tartaric acid. One is meso form, another plus form, another is minus form. So optically active form 2, optically inactive form meso form is 1. So this the Due to this plane, plane of internal plane of symmetry, the optical inactivity arises. This is called the meso tartaric because this is called internal compensation. A new term we can use. This is called internal compensation. That is within a molecule. 
one half rotate clockwise, another half rotate anticlockwise. So the optical inactivity arises due to internal compensation. This is meso. The automatically, there is another thing normally will be asked. That is what is meant by external compensation. If you take equal quantity of plus form, and if you mix equal quantity of minus form, then again it will be optically inactive. That is called a racemic form. External compensation. Okay, that is the most important information I want to give you here. Let me go for the next one. So in this other example, so that is here, symmetrical optical compound that just now I have discussed, I am giving the example, specific example. One and two mesoforms. Left two structure one, structure two they are mesoform, mirror images, optically inactive. And again, so D plus tartaric acid, the left side is plus, right side is minus. So D plus tartaric acid, L minus tartaric acid. This is the examples. So they are again optically active. So totally three isomerism possible in the case of, uh, three isomers are possible in the case of tartaric acid. So, now I am going to discuss symmetrical optically active compounds. Another type two, that is type 2 and 3 I am going to compare because this is your high second level I should not go in detail of higher level. So I should not go more information I should not give because you will be getting confused. Anyhow I will summarize. Type 2 and 3. Type 2 I will call it as odd number. Type, two, uh, type 3 I will call it as even number. So in this case so I am going to summarize how to find out. Normally in IIT question paper when you go question can be asked. Total number of ice number possible for a compound having the molecular formula. If any question is asked, we have to assess the particular compound is having optical active center or not. But then we have to assess if it is unsymmetrical or symmetrical we have to assess. If it is unsymmetrical, easy, formula is true to the power of n. If it is symmetrical, we should be very careful. The next question we have to define is an odd number is an even number. If it is symmetrical optical active compound, we have to assess odd number or even number. So depending upon odd number, Depending upon even number, we have to apply formula. So I am giving a very clear formula here. Kindly have it in mind. So, so now the compound, optical isomer compounds. So odd number, this is even number. So total number of optical isomers. Optical isomers mean both plus and minus one like this. So optical isomers. So optically may be inactive or may be active. That is formula is two to the power of n minus one. Yeah, the total number of asymmetric center. For even number, again same formula, 2 to the power of n minus 1. There is no difference between odd number and even number. So, coming for a meso form, meso form, in the case of odd number, the formula, slight change in the formula. That is, total number of meso form for odd number is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1 by 2. So, total number of optical isomer is 2 to the power of n minus 1. Total number of meso form is 2 to the power of n minus 1 by 2. Okay. Next, what is optically active form? This difference will give the optically active forms. This difference means that is optically active form is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1, the first case, minus 2 to the power of n minus 1 by 2. So this difference will give the total number of optical active forms. So whenever in, in examination, complete examination, question can, they will give a simple formula and they will ask questions how to identify the total number of optical isomers or not. Now let me explain with a simple example. Let me give an example. Just see here. This is one. C H O H C H O H C H O H and C O H. Suppose this is the formula given. Now we have to assess, is it symmetrical or unsymmetrical? This is symmetrical because the top end is COIH and bottom end is also COIH. How many asymmetric center? It is 1, this is 2, this is 3 asymmetric center. So it is odd number. So odd number means we have to apply the formula that is, what is the total number of optical isomers? Optical isomer is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1. In this case, n equal to 3, 3 minus 1, and you 2, 2 to the power of 2, nothing but 4. So, the first case, 4 for this one. The next one, meso form, how is, what is the meso? I can apply the same formula. What is the meso? It is 2 to the power of n minus 1 by 2. That is the formula. By 2, I have to apply. So, n is 3, 3 minus 1, 2, 2 by 2, 1. That is nothing but 2. So, meso form 2. Then, what is the optically active form? This difference. So, active, 
active form is equal to 4 minus 2 that is 2. So, this formula containing 3 asymmetric center. So, total number of isomer, optical isomers are possible, 4 isomers possible. Total number of meso 2, total number of active form 2. So, this is the way we have to analyze. So, this is the specific example I have taken, I have analyzed. So, very carefully, you have, so whenever any question is asked, assess unsymmetrical or symmetrical. Symmetrical, next question, you can classify as an odd number or even number. Odd number, this, this formula is common for both for odd number and even number, but in meso form, it is a slightly variation. So, let me show you that one. What is the variation? Is just see here. In this case, even number, the meso form is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 2 by 2. So, here odd number 1. Even number is that is the only difference you have to memorize. Let me repeat. see the difference. Total number of optical isomers, both cases 2 to the power of n minus 1. Very easy you can remember. But meso form, all numbers I am using 2 to the power of n minus 1 by 2, even number 2 to the power of n minus 2 by 2. That is the only difference you have to remember. Automatically, the difference will give automatically the total number of optically active isomers. This is the interesting information. They must have. So any question is asked, we can easily assess the total number of optical isomers possible or not. So this is the way we have to analyze. Okay, let me go for the next one. So so far what I have discussed is optical active compounds due to asymmetry I have discussed. Now I am going to discuss optical active compound due to dissymmetry. What is dissymmetry? So the dissymmetry means so, the molecule as a whole is asymmetric. That is the important information. That means, symmetry, dissymmetry molecule is one where no plane of symmetry, no center of symmetry, no axis of symmetry, and no alternate axis of symmetry. All the four symmetries are absent in any molecule. That particular molecule, we call it as dissymmetry molecule. Kindly have it in mind. In dissymmetry molecule, there is no asymmetric carbon atom will be there. So, there is no asymmetric carbon atom, but the molecule as a whole is asymmetry. Okay, what are these? Here I am giving some three important examples I am giving here. One is allenes, one specific example. Second is pyranes, second example. Third is biphenides. So, these three examples are specific examples for dissymmetric molecules. Dissymmetric molecules are chiral molecules, optical active molecules, but there is no asymmetric center. Alenes, spiranes, biphenyl. Now we can see here. So first let me take now alenes. Alene is the specific, what we are seeing here it is alene. Structure of alene. I have already pointed out, all molecular models are three-dimensional. Molecules are three-dimensional in nature. Whereas we are representing this three-dimensional molecule into two-dimensional board or notebook. But if you just see the structure, what we can uh, assume that CH3, CH3 is on the same side and EHH is on the same side. No, it is not correct. Because in order to differentiate, they are not in the same plane. I have indicated dotted line right hand side, I have solid line on the left hand side. Same way for hydrogen. So hydrogen dotted line left side, the solid line on right side because these indicate all the four atoms are in different plane. I want to. So it is very very difficult to visualize the two dimensional board. Now I am going to show you the model. Now just see here. This is the alanes. And this is the alanes. Now what is the interesting information? Just see here. There is carbon carbon. This is pi bond, single bond. Carbon carbon double bond perpendicular to each other. This double bond is perpendicular to each other. And also just see when I am keeping like this automatically CH3, CH3 they are not in the same plane. Hydrogen and hydrogen they are not in the same plane. So if I want to cut any way, if I cut, if you want to take a plane of symmetry there is no mirror image. Or if I want to cut in this direction there is no mirror image. So there is no plane of symmetry, there is no center of symmetry, there is no axis, there is no alternate axis. So the molecule as a whole asymmetry. This is the alanx. Let me just see here. So CH3, CH3. In the board when you look, the, you can assume that two CH3 go on the same side, two are not the same side. No, actually it is not. If you look this model. Now if you want to visualize this, you just see the two carbon-carbon double bond perpendicular to each other. I am just rotating, just see here. 
So central weight is sigma, top the two are pi. So this is so two double bonds are perpendicular to each other. So automatically CH to CH to they are not the same plane. Hydrogen hydrogen they are not the same plane. So that is the interesting example of alanes. So alanes is a dissymmetry molecule. It is it is optical activity not due to asymmetric. It is due to dissymmetric. Same way another example I want to show. The next example is that is spirenes. What you are saying is spirene. So again another interesting information just see here. So what what is the main difference between alanes and spirene is in alanes between two carbon atoms there was double bond here. But in the instead of the double bond, now it is changed to CH2 group. That's the only difference. So in alanes, double bond is present. Instead of double bond, it is connected by two methylene groups there. This is a specific example of spiranes. Now I will show the model now. So now what you are now seeing is the the corresponding spiranes. Just see, it's a four-membered ring. In the board, you can see four-membered ring. That four-membered ring here. The first carbon here, four-membered ring. Another four-membered ring is perpendicular. In the, in the in alanes, carbon-carbon double bond is perpendicular to each other. But in this case, the four-membered ring, one four-membered ring is perpendicular to each other. So what will happen now? Automatically, when you are just seeing here, automatically there is CH3 in this plane, but another CH3 is in this plane. They are not the same plane. Same with hydrogen here. And another hydrogen is below, so they are not the same plane. So here, if I cut here, there is no plane of symmetry. Any angle, if I cut, there is no plane of symmetry, no center of symmetry, no alternate axis of symmetry, and no axis of symmetry. So this molecule as a whole is asymmetry. That is, spirene is optically active due to dissymmetry, but not due to asymmetry. This is another important example. So I will go for the next example is biphenyls. So here I have given a specific example by phenyl. So one side I am using COH group, another side I am giving SO3H groups. Now one important information I want to give: simple by phenyls, simple by phenyls is optically inactive. Suppose assume this is a benzene ring, this is another benzene ring. So if this one benzene ring, another benzene ring, if it is perpendicular, if I put a mirror image, it's a planar. So there is a plane of symmetry. In that case, biphenyl is optically active. Unsubstituted biphenyl is optically inactive. But when you are introducing in ortho positions, COH group or SO3 group, so automatically these two benzene ring will not be in the same plane. So one will be perpendicular to each other. So one plane will become perpendicular to another one automatically. COH group above the plane, another SO3H will be another plane. So there will be no plane of symmetry. So biphenyl compound also optically active, not due to asymmetric but due to dissymmetric. So let me conclude now. The idea here it is. So alanes, spirenes, but suitably substituted biphenyl specifically in the ortho positions. Bulky groups present, so optically. So these three compounds, alanes, spirenes, and biphenyls, are optically active, not due to asymmetry, but due to dissymmetry. This is the most important information I want to give record under the optical isomerism. Now, so I hope uh, you have a very clear idea regarding for optical isomerisms. Under the optical isomerisms. There are some important terms to be discussed. I will discuss one day one. One, Kaira. Two, Ye Kaira. Three, Pro Kaira. Four, Yanenshioma. Five, diastereo isomer. Diastereo isomer. Number six, resolution. Number seven, racemization. Number eight. Asymmetric synthesis.
and 9 Walden inversion. So, I will discuss these terms one by one with suitable examples. First, let me take uh, chiral. What is chiral? Optically active molecules are called chiral. A specific example we have discussed already lactic acid is a chiral molecule. Optically active compound. This is the chiral molecule. Any optical active molecule is called chiral molecule or compound is called chiral. What is the next one? Yale chiral. Any optically inactive compound or molecule is called a chiral. Specific example, propionic acid. So this compound is called a chiral, which is not optically active. Another example, pyruvic acid, CH3COCOH. This is again optically inactive compound, we are calling it as a chiral. And the third one. Prochiron. What is called prochiron? That is any compound or molecule which produces chiral molecule is called prochiron. So let me give a specific example. Take pyruvic acid, a specific example, which is not optically active. 2 keto propionic acid is the IEPAS name for this one. So when this compound is allowed to undergo the reduction in a suitable condition, it will produce lactic acid. So normally, if this compound is undergo reduction to produce a mixture of plus and minus from lactic acid, but when, it's, when you treat this compound with suitable, that is minus menthol, it will form an ester. Then this is on reduction gives a method mainly minus lactic acid. So this method is called prochiral. That is, any optically inactive compound can be converted into optically active compound. The compound from which it is formed, we will call it as prochiral. Next one, enantioma. So under the enantioma, I have already explained you. So let me show the examples. So examples. What is enantioma? I have already discussed. Let me repeat again. Optically active compounds having same molecular formula, but one will be the mirror image of the other. The specific example here it is the D3OS is producing, that is, here L3OS is there in the other side. So D and L form of the, the corresponding, this compound will call it as enantioma. That is optically active word plus form and minus form of any compound, we will call it as an enantioma. So let me repeat again. Optically active compound having same molecular formula, but one will be the mirror image of the other or called an enantioma. Okay. So what is the next one? Diastereoisoma. So let me what is diastereoisoma? That is optically active compounds having same molecular formula. But one will not be the mirror image of the other. They are called diastereoisomer. In this case, I have given example D erythros and D trios are the two specific examples. That is, they are coming under this diastereoisomer. That means one it is not the mirror image of the other. Just see here. So this is the most important. That is called diastereoisomers. So the, I have already discussed. The, how to differentiate the uh, enantioma and diastereoisomer? Generally, optically active compound containing minimum two asymmetric center only will produce diastereoisomer, whereas optically active compound containing only one asymmetric center will produce always enantioma. So, next, let me go for resolution. What is resolution? Resolution is a process by which optically inactive racemic mixer will be converted into optically active plus form and minus form. Suppose we have a mixer of plus form and minus form, this is called racemic mixer. And when this mixer, by suitable convert, conversion, this can be converted into 
plus form and minus form. This conversion will call it as resolution. The important methods are there are mechanical separation, biochemical separation, chemical separation, kinetic separation, etc. There are a number of methods available to separate the irrhythmic form into optically active form. This process is called resolution. The next one, a racemization. Racemization. What is racemization? Racemization is a process by which optically active one form will, that is converted into optically inactive plus form and minus form. A specific example. Suppose if you are starting with an optically active compound plus form, due to some chemical reaction, if it is converted into plus and minus form, that process will call it as a racemization. The same way. Minus form by conversion again will be converted into plus and minus. We will call it as racemization. So that is conversion of plus form into plus and minus, or conversion of minus form into plus and minus. We will call it as racemization. So normally, when you are studying the SN1 and SN2 mechanism, we will come across under the SN1 mechanism. If you take optically active substrate, always uh, uh, the racemization takes place. That is, if you take a plus form, the product will be always a mixture of minus and plus. If you take a minus form, the product will be always a mixture of plus and minus form. This is called a racemization. And next, asymmetric synthesis. Asymmetric synthesis. What is asymmetric synthesis? Asymmetric synthesis is a process by which optically active compound can be synthesized from optically inactive compound. So any synthesis by which an optically active compound can be prepared from optically inactive compound, that process, that synthesis is called asymmetric synthesis. A simplest example I have already pointed out. Suppose I am converting pyruvic acid, that is to ketopropionic acid into lactic acid. So this is now, this process we will call it as asymmetric synthesis. We are creating a new asymmetric center which is called asymmetric synthesis. So let me give the final one that is Walden inverse. Walden inverse. So Walden inversion is another most important term commonly used in optical examples. What is the Walden inversion? It's a process by which optically active one form will be converted into another form. That is, plus form will be converted into minus form or minus form will be converted into plus form. This inversion, that is plus to minus or minus to plus, this conversion is called Walden inversion. This was discovered by Walden, so this inversion is called Walden inversion. So let me explain with a suitable example. If you take malic acid, that is plus malic acid. If you take this plus malic acid and if you treat with PCL5, phosphorus pentachloride, this is converted into the corresponding minus form COOH, Cl, EH, CH2, COOH. So this is minus form. So plus form converted to minus form is a different compound. But this compound, when I take with silver hydroxide, now the product will be converted into COH, OH, EH, CH to COH. So this will be minus. So both we are calling it as malic acid, M-A-L-I-C, malic acid. So plus malic acid is converted into minus malic acid. This conversion is called Walden inversion. The same way, minus to plus, if you convert minus malic acid to plus malic acid, it is called the Walden inversion. So, these are the, there is one more term is also there, that is meta rotation. That will I will discuss this meta rotation when I am discussing the carbohydrate because it is suitable when I explain that. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture.